next speaker is going to be Ed Manlov, and he has been a uh, Selenium Tool Library uh, lead developer back in the times, and today he's talking to us the importance of open source community. So, stage is yours. Thank Please. you. Thank you. Thank you, Ismo. I should say Kitos. Uh, good afternoon. My name is uh, Ed Manlove, and today I want to talk about community. Um, this is very important. So, I want to reflect a little bit on my journey, which you heard a little bit from ASCO, um, and talk about my journey through various open source communities. And what's really important here is I don't want the focus to be on me. Um, I want the focus to be on you, on all of us, as the robot framework community and what that means. So what type of community are we and what type of community do we want to become? So the first thing I want to share um, is that community is important. Um, I know that might sound obvious, but that needs to be said. Community is very, very important. Everywhere I go, everywhere I look, everyone's talking about the importance of community in open source software projects. So one person who's talked about this is John Resig. Um, John Resig's the creator of jQuery. And one of the things that he was uh, recently talking about was his leadership of the jQuery project. Now, jQuery, if you don't know, is an underlying JavaScript framework that is pretty much was used by every body doing any web development. So very important project. And John said in his talk, the very first person he brought on to the project was not someone to develop the code, but someone to help manage the community. It wasn't really manage, but someone to listen to the community and also someone to address the concerns of the community. And he stated this was extremely, extremely important to sex. Uh -huh. success of the jQuery project. So another time, I was, uh, I was attending a, a, um, a panel conference um, of content management systems, and it was a kind of a, which one do you want to use? And they were all talking about this. And the, the moderator of that panel actually asked a very, very interesting question. They said, if you had to choose another CMS, which one would you choose and why? So you're being forced to take out of your maybe testing framework and use another one. And why would you use that other one? And one of the panelists chose one of the other CMSs, and I don't remember which, but he said the reason he would choose that was the community around that um, CMS, that other project. That was the reason he would switch over. Um, and that's really important, especially when you think about developers and you know, how stuck in our ways we are. I'm a Python person. If you told me I had to go over to PHP, I'd be like, no, thank you. Um, but that's very, very important. So the reason this person would choose that other CMS was because of the community around it. That's the Plone, it's in the Plone community, one of the conferences. So my observations about community haven't always been you know, from afar or from other people. About a year after I started um, using Plone for my own project, someone started having a sprint. It was a small sprint, it was online, and they were doing right to left languages. This is a screenshot of Plone, very old Plone. Um, on a right to left screen, and it's almost, if you look at it, it's a mirror image of everything. Everything's off to the side, um, it's Arabic. And so they needed help with um, doing some work in Plone in that. And I was doing my own project, and interesting enough, my project was a community planning tool. And one of the key features that I wanted to put in there was internationalization. So when this person in the community said, reached out and said, I have a need, I thought, for you know, internationalization, I thought this is a perfect opportunity for me to learn that part of the software because I had never gone into that code. So I went ahead and went in there and decided to help them out with that work. 
So there was a couple of lessons that I want to share with you on that. One is look for open doors, right? We all have needs um, in the stuff that we do. You know, you might be looking for doing web testing, or maybe you're trying to get test data out of Excel because you've got 800 tests that you run through using data out of Excel. And so you've got some sort of need that's out there. Um, so if you've got a need, come into the community. You know, open up that door. Look for those open doors. And lesson two, it's actually okay if you're coming into that door because of your need. You know, there's a lot of talk about open source communities and sharing and how everybody works and about giving back, but it's, it's okay to say, hey, I'm coming in there because I need something. And that's my introduction. You know, my introduction came in because I needed something from someone else. And so I was actually going to use this as an opportunity for myself. So that initial introduction to me um, actually led me to new problems. Let me go back, just give you the screenshot. So one of the big questions is, how do you test this? Um, and so, you know, I started doing this and I was like, well, wait a second, how do you test that? That led me to new things such as the tool Selenium. And so as soon as I started using Selenium, that led me to new people within the Plone community, which led me actually to a new problem, which was how do we stop regression testing on this? Because the right to left community in Plone is probably about 2% of the usage, very, very small. So a lot of people, when they're developing, don't pay attention to this. So how do we test that? And that's a need actually not of my own, but a need of the community. So from there, um, I finally gone through and um, stepped out from kind of my own need and came into the community. So I attended the Plone Conference in San Francisco. I met ASCO um, for the first time there. Um, and in addition to that, I met this gentleman here. And it's a bad picture, it's my personal photo. Um, it's the gentleman behind the lamp and the beer tap, but the one without the glasses, the one on the right up here. That's Alexander Lemmy. Alexander Lemmy is the founder, one of the co-founders of the Plone Project. And if I can use this term, I, I considered Alex to be what I would consider a, a Plone god. He was just great. You know, I was in awe of Alex. But the Plone community had a very, very important value. And this is one I think we should share. And so one of their values that they have is there are no rock stars, right? So there are no people that are set aside. There's no one group of people, you know, <laughs> that is above everybody else that you can't come and talk to. And actually, one of the most interesting things was that Alexander Lemmy had actually wanted to talk to me because it turned out that not only was I interested in right-to-left languages, it was actually a personal interest of his. He's very much a UX type of person. He comes from the UX field, so right-to-left languages is very a visual thing. It's not necessarily a programming issue, it's more of a visual issue. So it turns out Alex actually wanted to meet me. Um, and so this is a very, very, very important value. Um, so outside of talking about that, so there's no rec stars, right? That being said, everyone can be a hero. Um, and I think, you know, I've heard some controversy over Star Wars. So who has, actually I'll ask just this one, who has wanted to see the new Star Wars movie but has not seen it? Oh my, Okay. So I won't, I won't give away any plot lines, um, but this lady right here in front and center is Rose Tico. And so, tell us without giving away the storyline. Um, starts off, she appears to, be, appears to be what is just like an ordinary mechanic, okay? But that's not really who she is. Turns out, from that, you learn, you know, oh, oh, forgot this part. She's, on t she's in complete and total awe of our quote-unquote hero or savior of the day, um, Finn. So she's in complete total awe of him, just like I was of actually um, Lemmy. And so 
she's coming in, but early on, you know, she's revealed to be really the hero that she is. She is very much a hero. On top of that, she volunteers for some long shot mission, which I will not tell you about. Um, she helps save the day, which is Star Wars, you know, that's going to end the end. The good guys are going to end the end. It's not like the darks. It's not, the title of the movie is not The Dark Side Rules. So she saves the day um, and includes that she pushes around the so called rock star Finn. So, you know, this is a very, very important value. Everyone can be a hero. On top of that idea, oh, my heroes. Um, so my personal heroes. Um, this is pictures of people on my team. These are my heroes. Um, Adam and Anna and Priya, uh, Nishat, Juan, Dan, Padma, Jim and Jim, um, Sean, Jason, I'm forgetting Brad, don't forget Brad, um, and everybody else. So these are my own personal heroes. On top of that, Asko is, Asko is a perfect hero. Um, and what is a hero? A hero is a person, you know, so here's a description. I could give Asko a description. Wonderful guy, really nice guy. One of the smartest guys I know. Um, from a technical standpoint, Python, you know, top of the line. But the reason he's a hero is not because he's this absolutely great developer, which he really is. It's because he comes to the community with the skills that he has. He was talking about the idea of helping train other people with robot framework. That's why he's a hero. He brings the skills that he has to the community. So on top of the idea that you can be a hero, you're needed. This is really important. You are needed in the community. Each and every one of you is needed in the community. Um, this is the Selenium Conference. Um, Selenium Conference from uh, Austin? That was Austin last year. Um, but in the most recent Selenium Conference, I'm trying to remember his name. Oh, I forgot his name. Simon Stewart. Um, Simon Stewart, who's the, the kind of the de facto leader of the project, was giving his annual keynote. Um, and one of the things he talked about was the bus factor. Does everybody, is there anybody that's never heard of the bus factor? Okay, so bus factor is basically this. What would happen to your project if your core developer stepped out in front of a bus? And the bus took them to the hospital and that. I, I prefer to call it the Rhode Island, let's go to the beach factor. Um, your core developer decides he's done developing and he goes off to the beach. And so Simon was talking about the bus factor in the Selenium project. And how many people do you need to lose out of your core team before you start to have issues? And the factors is actually kind of small for selenium. Now, I have absolutely no doubt whatsoever that if that actually did happen, they all go to the beach in Rhode Island, um, then the project would go on. But it's a, it's a real factor. Um, it's a real important thing. So why does that happen? Um, let's say everyone's needed. So you're needed. Um, question is sometimes why does that happen? Um, part of this work life balance. And it's very important that we maintain that. This is my family, my sons, my daughter, my wife. Um, so, you know, part of the say a work-life balance. And you might ask yourself, is that a factor in our community? No. Yes. And the answer is yes. Um, and you want to see an example of that right here. I was helping to do the Selenium 2 library project. Um, I picked it up through my work in Plum, um, and all going through that. And I do my work, all the pictures of my friends there. I work on it eight hours a day. This is my family. And at a certain point, I just kind of slowly drifted away um, and left it to poor Tattoo to pick it up. Um, so, you know, this is a real factor. Um, everyone's needed. And so it's really important that as a member of the community that you start to open up those doors. And it's also very important for us who have been kind of starting to, 
don't know how you would call that. Maybe take a leadership or a role in the community, um, welcome you in. And how do we do that? You know, how do we bring in people um, into the community? So we need to meet together. Um, but that's very important. So all of you out there, um, I'm encouraging you to join us in. So, so I'll, I'll say to talk, talk about, about individuals. individuals. Corporations play a role. Um, and corporations play a very important role. Um, I don't know all the roles they play. Um, and I don't have all the answers here. Um, I come mostly from an individual. I do work in a corporation. I can make a difference in my corporation. And I can try to get them to be a bigger role in like sponsoring the foundation and things like that. But this is, they play an important role. But if you come from a corporation, um, I know there's a lot of discussion going on. Um, Nathan's gonna talk about some and that, but the corporations play a role. This is a, you know, individuals play a role, corporations play a role. So if you come from a corporation, this is also an important thing of how, do, how what's your role in open source projects? You might ask yourself, do you have a policy on how do your employees contribute to it? And is it easy for them? You know, I've heard some stories about it being very hard and easy for them. So, big things. Community is important. Community is the reason why people join and stay on the community, um, or stay on a project. On top of that, um, if you talk about the Plone community, the build master of the Plone community just recently said that Plone is such a great community that people who have, over time, naturally left the community, actually still come back to sprints um, and show up at sprints and do it because the community is such a, a wonderful thing. Um, look for opportunities. So everybody's got a reason. You've got a reason to be here. You know, what's your reason for being here? Share that with someone. Open up that door. Stay with us. Be a hero. Heroes are needed. They're very much needed. Um, Let's try to have that philosophy. There are no rock stars here. Heroes versus rock stars, very important. And how many times can I say it? You're needed. One last bit, and this is the most important, is the joy. Um, it's important to me. I, I am a people person, so I like the people aspect of it. The, be, the ability to come here all the way to Finland um, to go around with tattoo to the museum, you know, to have people be introduced. What is your life like? Um, but it might be more than that. You know, for some people, it's a job. You know, robot framework provides me a job. It's education. It's training. I've advanced my skills. You know, so there's joy, um, and whatever that joy is, but find joy in it, um, because you know, if you want to be a sad person, okay, but I find joy in it. I don't know. Um, this, is a, this is a note I wrote to myself once, very early on. Decision, five whys, discipline, action. Checking to see time. Okay, so um, we can talk about ideas for community, and you might have some more. If you have any other descriptions, talk to people, talk to me, um, talk on the channels. There's the mailing list, there's Slack. Um, so there's a lot of different ways, but, but try to voice it. And if you have trouble finding a voice or are unsure about your voice, try to find a way in. You know, there are definitely people that will listen. There's definitely people that will help you in there. Um, and if in desperation you can't find anybody, then start shouting and screaming because it's really important that your voice is heard. So action. Um, let's do some action. So I was going to kind of leave it there somewhat, but then I realized when we have 250 people in a room, why go home and learn about each other when we're at home so we can learn about each other here? So I'm going to do some exercises. It's the middle of the day. It's post-lunch. Um, and so who, can I ask who, if you are willing to, to share, who wrote up on there for the lightning talks? We should have a shake hands if you're from this country one. Philip, right? All right, so Philip, Philip, you wanna, do you want to come up here and do this with me or do you want to? I've got a whole list of questions. If you are from Finland, could you please stand up? And I need to sit down because I am not from Finland. So, okay. 
my, my initial plan was that people from Finland move to the left and then everyone else to the right. I thought about but that too. Do we want to stay? Like, let's stay where we are. <laughs> I because so one. More than 50%, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so so one of the things we can do is everybody look around, see okay who's from this, who's not from there, and so you can say okay. So majority of the room, I know they're going to record this, and I'm not sure the recording is going to capture it. So majority of the room, all right, all right, thank you. Um, those who are, let's see here, if you're within the greater Helsinki area, please sit down. So majority there. And you know what, that's an important, that's a very important knowledge thing. Um, there's a lot of talk about meetups and that. You don't have to host a conference to have this. You know, having local, meeting someone local can be really good. All right, so I don't know anything else about Finland. So thank you all the Finland people. <laughs> if you are from Russia, please stand up. Our friends from Russia. I know there's Dmitry and, and Victor and such. Um, all right. Do you guys all know each other, ladies and gentlemen? I know there's ladies too, ladies and no? No? Okay, so, so there you go. go over Just and shake hands. Yeah, go shake other. hands. <laughs> okay. Meet, meet up. Just, just, you know, it's a, it's a good thing. So, um, Netherlands. Anybody from the Netherlands? I've got to sit down. All right, Netherlands. Two people. Three. All right. All right. Yep, check out. Um, anyone from Germany? That would be me and me and. That's Peter, and nice to meet you. We should talk. Yeah, and this is this is the goal of this. This is forming community. All right. Um, I apologize. Other parts of Europe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was gonna. I was. I, I flew into London. I was gonna add the, the the. I was actually that was a funny thing. I was gonna say London instead of the United Kingdom. Yes, including Switzerland. We are not going to get into world politics. Um, all right. People from Great Britain. Yeah. <laughs> help me, help me out here, Philip. Yeah, you all know each other because you're all standing next to each other. I know. I looked up a list of like European countries by population. Was also going like, from the top. Um, Spain. Do we have Spain? Sweden. 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 Spain. 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 Sweden. 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 Sweden's over there. <laughs> Where are you from? Where are you guys? Sweden, Sweden as well. Okay. Um, I'm going to jump because I want to. I've got some other type of category other than just countries. I've got some interesting things. Um, Asia. Anyone from Asia? All right. Welcome. Welcome. Yep. All right. Welcome. Um, India. Did anybody come from India? All right. Yeah. Um, all the Americas, South America, Central America, North America. And, and I want to introduce, just, just a quick note for those from America, come talk to Nathan, um, right over here. Um, important person, including Canada, North America, South America. I don't, pa Pablo didn't come. Yeah, Pablo didn't come. He didn't make it up? I don't think so. Okay. Um, all right. And the, I apologize. And I don't. I I I apologize. I don't. One of the tough things with about being community is sometimes you come with your own either bias or ignorance. So I'm going to jump because I want to do some other category, but I don't want to diminish you. Um, any other parts of the world that I'm missing? Okay. Where are you from? France. 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 Any, any other? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, question. So another question. Have you ever attended a talk or meet up about robot framework stand up? Other than this conference, which, yeah, I... I okay, that's a, that's a fairly small number. That's a fairly small number. There's about a couple, a dozen, two dozen. Okay. Um, stay, actually, if you could stay standing, um, if you stay, continue to stay standing if you've attended more than one. All right. More than a three. 
Okay. Just now we're just about uh, oh, half a dozen. Okay. All right. Let me see my other questions here. Oh, of those people that have attended one, have you ever traveled far to do it? And far is a relative term other than this conference again. Um, you know, have you ever traveled far? You would say I had to travel far to go to that. So Peke, and, yeah, okay, so a couple. All right, um, switching topics. Have you ever, are anybody currently using RIDE, the robot IDE, stand up? Well, that's very interesting. So uh, about a third of the room, I might say, a third of the room. All right, thank you. Sit down, if you could, please. Um, if you're using some other programmer, uh, and this is important, um, a programmable editor like Emacs, Notepad++, VI. And if you're not sure, then just go ahead and sit down. But you know you're using, oh, I should stand up. I use Emacs, programmable editor. Okay, that's, a less, that's less than the number of ride that's that. How many are using just a plain editor, plain text editor? What'd you call it? What are the rest of you using? <laughs> I guess, yeah. Well, I guess an ID, I would almost consider it programmable. I guess that's maybe not programmable. Okay, an ID. All right. Um, switching topics again. And I, I'm about two minutes, so I'm not giving you any time to ask me questions. Ha, ha, ha. How many are using external libraries? I almost expect most of the room to stand up here. Ooh. Let's, I'm, I should stand up because I'm... So that's interesting. There's actually about a couple dozen people in the room of 250 that are not. Okay. Um, stay standing because I did Oh, um, so raise your hand if you have modified an ex one of those libraries. And I'm not, I'm not worried about copyright or at all any of that. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just curious as to see. Okay, so maybe a third, about a third of the room have done that. Okay, that's interesting. Um, remain standing if your web page test. Trying to read what I wrote earlier today. Okay, we'll do, we'll do that. Oh, sit down. Go ahead and sit down. If you were doing web-based testing, this, now you're starting to get a little bit of personal advice. Web-based web testing. Web-based testing with from robot framework. That's maybe a little bit over half the room, maybe two-thirds. Okay. And I could go through, okay. Um, where am I at? Okay. Oh, those who are only using the Selenium 2 library, sit down. Only Selenium 2. So you're, and if you don't know, it's all right. Okay. Ah. How many of you, um, if you're doing mobile, stay standing up. If you're not doing mobile, sit down. Ooh. Interesting change. Okay. Um, anybody, okay, go ahead, sit down. Anybody, just raise your hands here. If you, uh, anybody testing Angular? This is a real personal question. We should talk. Okay. Hmm? Yes, go ahead. I'll stop, I'll stop. But this is about community. And, and anybody oh. doing embedded systems? That's a really interesting one. Yeah, stand up, stand up. I want to see y'all. Embedded systems, great. Come and talk to me. <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, who here within their organization, uh, where they're working on, is the only person using robot framework? Like, who's a, like a sole uh, hero? Who's a hero within their own company? Stand up, stand up. Go ahead, stand up. Because there's only about a handful, so that's about a five. About five. Both, both. Single, single one. They are heroes. Yeah. I should sit down. All right. So I'm, I'm, my time is up. My time is now blinking red because I'm over. But I think we're going into a break. And I guess I'll open it up for questions. Because all I have left to say is I think Kitos. So Kitos. All right. All right.
So, questions. It's a tough one to have questions on. I mean, you, you don't ask me, well, how did I get community together? Um, but community is important. It can be tough. Um, be open. Be kind. You know. Why did you stop maintaining the CMT <laughs> library? I wanted, I wanted to give you something interesting to work on. And the real answer is... Maybe you it's can talk that about work balance, work balance, work balance life. Hmm? Maybe you can have that discussion with Solna sometime. <laughs> we can discuss. Because I think it's going to take a long, long time. <laughs> Is anybody ready to take a, a, a larger role in the community? Anybody kind of willing to put their hand up? S stand up, stand up. L large, is, large is relative. Large is absolute. When it comes to community, it is absolutely relative. A small step is large, you know. The, the, fact, the fact that you are teaching other people in your community, in your, the, your workplace and helping them is important. So, because you were, we, we were talking about this, I'm telling you, because we were talking about it. You know, the idea of, you know, how do you share? Sharing is important. Um, you know, ASCO, it's funny, ASCO credits me with introducing him to the robot framework, but ASCO could teach me, you know, 112 things about Python. And that's what community is, right? But it also builds, you know, I'm, I'm here at this conference because of my job that I got because I learned, because I volunteered. Um, so community makes a difference. Community builds this. This builds people's jobs. That gives them you know, something to live with. So community is important. Um, it can be tough. You know, we have to communicate. Um, but I encourage you to. So find a voice. I'm going to stop talking. I'm coming down. Thank you very much. I have a lot of talk.